Section 1.6, midpoint and distance in the coordinate plane. So we're still going to be looking at line segments. What we're going to do is we're going to put them in the coordinate plane, the x, y axis system. Now what the coordinate plane does is it gives us a, a foundation. It gives us a, a setting where it's very easy to quantify because it's that grid and all of those grids have unit measurements. So wherever an object falls on that coordinate plane, there's a system ready to go to quantify that object and talk about some of its properties. Now the location or coordinates of a point are given by an ordered pair x, comma, y. x is your right and left movement, the horizontal axis. y is your up and down movement, the vertical axis. So looking at the midpoint formula, you have a line segment from A to B, M is going to be in the middle. That's your midpoint. Now, because we have two separate coordinates, point A and point B, that both X and Y ordered pairs, we have to kind of just uh, distinguish them from each other. So A is our first point. We'll call that X1 and Y1. B is our second point. Call that X2 and Y2. So the midpoint M of line segment AB with endpoints X1 and y1, and then also x2 and y2, is found by this formula. Now I can write it all out here, and then I want to explain it to you in the hopes that my explanation will help you remember it. So x1 plus x2 over 2 y1 plus y2 over 2. So that's the mathematics you do. You add the x-coordinates together, divide by 2. You add the y-coordinates together, you divide by 2. But really what we're doing, if I told you to take all the objects you have, add them up, and then divide by how many objects you have, you would know what that is. It's called an average. So we're finding the average of the x values. We're finding the average of the y values. I find that if someone knows why they're doing something, they're much better at remembering what they need to do. So rather than just memorize a formula, plug in numbers, and calculate it, what are you actually doing? You're finding averages. The midpoint formula is finding averages of your x's, finding averages of your y's. And if you can remember that, you can remember the formula. So find the coordinates of the midpoint of line segment PQ with endpoints P, negative 8, comma 3, and Q, negative 2, comma 7. So let's take P, make that our first point, x1, y1. Let's make Q our second point, X2, Y2. Let's go ahead and find the averages. So add up your X's, negative 8, negative 2, divide by 2. Find the average of the Y's. Add up your Y values, divide by 2. Negative 8 and negative 2 is negative 10. Negative 10 over 2 is negative 5. 3 plus 7, hey, positive 10. 10 over 2 is positive 5. And on this graph here, I mean, let's like check the reasonableness of our answer. Does what we got make sense? Let's go 5 units to the left. Each of these dashes is 2 units. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Hey, you know what? That answer makes sense. We have our coordinates of negative 5, comma 5. Now let's change it up a little bit. Let's say they didn't give you the coordinates of the endpoints. Let's say they gave you one of the endpoints right here. That's an endpoint of x, y, x is those coordinates. And then m, the midpoint, They gave you that. Now find the coordinates of y, the other endpoint. Okay? 
there's a couple of ways that you can go about this. Me personally, I'm really into visuals, being able to see what I'm doing. So I know that X is over here at 2 comma 7. M is over here at 6 comma 1. And I want to get to Y. So let's talk about a story. How do you get from X to M? Well, to get from X to M, you'd have to go, let's see, down six units from seven down to one, and then over to the right four units from two to six. Now, M is the midpoint, the halfway point. When you are halfway done with something, you have to take everything, all the time that you've spent, and do that again. So, we need to go over to the right another four units. And we need to go down another six. So, starting at our midpoint, midpoint was six and one. We have to go four units to the right. We have to go six units down. So we will get our y coordinates. Six plus four is ten. One minus six, negative five. So a little bit of creative problem solving required, but it's something you can definitely do visually. If you want, you can work with a formula. There's also this option. So now distance, okay, again, those line segments, they are finite, they have a distance, a length that you can measure. We have two ways of doing that, the distance formula or the Pythagorean theorem. The distance formula requires that you use coordinates, the Pythagorean theorem requires that you use a triangle. So what I want to do is I want to kind of set up both of them for you. So find JK and FG and then determine whether they are congruent so whether their measures are equal so for JK let's use the distance formula the distance formula requires you to use X1, Y1, X2, Y2 so we have J which is at negative 4 comma zero, that'll be x1 and y1. We have k, which is at negative one, comma negative three. That'll be x2 and y2. So go ahead, use this information, plug it into the distance formula, see what you get. For fg, let's use the Pythagorean theorem. Now, Pythagorean theorem requires you to set up a right triangle. So, with f and g, let's set up a right triangle. We have this a squared plus b squared equals c squared equation. So, let's call a this horizontal, it's 4. Let's call b the vertical, 3. So, this can be a, this can be b, your hypotenuse will be c. So go ahead, solve both of these methods, see if you get the same answer. If you get the same answer, they're congruent. If you don't, they're not congruent, and you can check your results on my completed notes online.